So, analgesics. There is a part of the noise, right? It's not too difficult, you know a lot of them. So, there's only three analgesics, right? NSAIDs, acetaminophen, and opioids. NSAIDs, let's draw here a mechanism, and I'll delete it later. Okay? You have arachidonic acid. Now, this happens in the body from cells. This could go through either cyclooxygenase or through lipoxygenase. Cyclooxygenase will turn it into prostaglandines or thromboxan A2. And lipoxygenase will turn it into leuco trienes. Okay? Because this will touch the base where you're talking about the asthma. Alright. What do leukotrienes do? They cause bronchoconstriction and inflammation. So, bad for asthma. These are bad for asthma. That's the drug. These are. So, anti these is good for asthma. So, these are cause bronchoconstriction. Prostaglandine, there's a bunch of them. They're associated with pain and inflammation. And also, um, peptic ulcer stuff, right? So, acid. Remember, we said the mesoprostol? So, so, they actually help. So, um, how do I going to say this for you? Good for stomach, okay? <laughs> Good for stomach. Protective. protective. They make the protective, they help my protective layer, they reduce the acidity, and they're responsible for pain and inflammation as well. Thromboxan A causes platelet aggregation. Now I want you to look at this and think that this arachidonic acid comes from phospholipid A, A2. So it needs to be moved on. Some, it wants to do something. It wants to do business, all right? This arachidonic acid. It's going to go somewhere. Okay, so NSAIDs, where do NSAIDs work? NSAIDs work. Here, right? So they block and say they block and stays. Cox one, Cox two. When they block that, they block the platelet aggregation, so you get blood thinning. They block the pain and inflammation, good. But they also block the good thing for the stomach. So you have now more tendency to get a peptic ulcer. That all makes sense to you, right? Because this is the part we know or we remember. Now they found out that there's, they could make a drug, they found out that they only block COX-2, like for example, repo coxib, and they all end with coxib. They realized that they only block the prostaglandin responsible for inflammation. But they also realized that when they do that, they are, they may cause more heart attacks. So I want you to imagine this. If you're blocking this path only, more of it is going to go that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why you have more likely to have a heart attack. Same thing goes for the NSAIDs. If you're blocking the COX, arachidonic acid is going to go this way, and this is bad for lungs. Does that explain the asthma? Yeah. You see? So that's why with NSAIDs, we don't want it. Only severe asthma is a problem. But you want to give aspirin because aspirin will block these irreversibly and most of the, this acid will go this way and then you'll get more leukotrienes, which is bad because it causes bronchial constrictions. Okay? States, you know, what's anything special about them? You got aspirin, 
or they use the other word acetosolic, salicylic acid, right? Ibuprofen, naproxen, ketorolac, Sulindac, Indomidacin, okay? Anything special about aspirin? What? For blood They all could a little bit cause blood thinning. But what's special about aspirin? It's irreversible. So blocks COX-1, COX-2, irreversibly. So you have to wait for a new one. These ones are reversible. So know that aspirin is irreversible and safe. Okay? That's why when we need to stop, they say stop it for, you have to stop for seven days and wait so everything regenerates. But, so we, we can't rely on that, we don't need that for these. These will go away right away because they're reversible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so irreversible, okay? Ibuprofen, nothing special. If they ask you which one is stronger, Codeine or Ibuprofen 600, you go with Ibuprofen 600, okay? No problem, nothing special. Ketorolac is very strong. Let's do doses. What's the max daily dose for aspirin? 4,000 4, milligrams. Question that came in my exam. Mm -hmm. okay. What's the max dose for ibuprofen? 2,400. This is daily, right? Milligrams. Yeah. Naproxen? 275, I believe, something like that. Or 250 to 275. That's how Hass's lecture said it. Okay. What's the max dose for ketorolac? 40. Okay. Ibuprofen comes in 400, 200, which is like over countable, and 600, right? And I think in the U.S. has the is it is it here too? Here too? No, yeah. So they're not going to ask for it. Okay. So 400 and 600. Now, how many times can you take ibuprofen a day? Okay. And Hass says what? Or it says basically every four to six hours. So few four to six hours. Okay. If you're giving 400, you can take it every four to six hours. If you're giving 600, you can't put the four. Does that make sense? Yeah. You can only give it every six hours. So pay attention to these things. Okay. Ketorolac, you can give 10 milligrams. Also few every six hours. Or four. Usually they always put four to six, but like just be careful about that trick. But naproxen is the only one that goes eight to six hours. Okay. And so yeah. So naproxen, two fifty to two seventy five. Oh, thirteen seventy five. Sure. Close. Ketorolac, forty milligram. Forty is max dose daily. Okay. And you take 10 every 6 hours or? Every 6 hours. This yeah. just looks like 26. Oh, oh, sorry. 10 to 10. Every 26 hours? That's a really weird number. <laughs> <laughs> the more than day. 2 to 6. So. Yeah. All right. Acetaminophen max dose daily? 4,000. 4, Anything bad about acetaminophen? It's a nephrotoxic liver. Hepatotoxic. Hepatotoxic. So bad for liver. Bad for liver. That's it. Okay. Opioids. You have natural and synthetic. The natural are like codeine and morphine, or anything that has those words in them, like hydromorphone, hydrocodeine, or codone. All those are natural. Um, natural. Synthetic is like. Mepridin and fentanyl. Okay, so if you have an allergy to a natural, you can still give the synthetic and vice versa. Okay? Um, the other thing is now, opioids shut down everything. That's, the, that's what they do. They shut down everything. You get constipation, um, you, they can shut down your breathing, everything shuts down basically. Okay? Okay. With them, with an overdose, if you have, if you have respiratory depression, you usually have 
What do you think? Meiosis or midriasis? Meiosis. Meiosis. You usually have meiosis with them. They shut down everything. But there's one that's part of that Takama thing. Remember the Takama thing? What was that? What did the Takama do? They have atrocrine like effect. Antimuscarinic. Antimuscarinic means midriasis or meiosis? Midriasis. So one of them causes midriasis. Which one was it? Mepridine, right? So mepridine is unique. That's the only one that causes midriasis from the opioids. Fentanyl is really strong, it's 100 times strong, but morphine, it's synthetic and it's used in IV sedation or in general anesthesia, to, to, to do general anesthesia. Okay. So, we have some examples on the septaminophen, some uh, trade dates. Some trade dates. Oh, trade yeah, sure. Um, so if you mix codeine, um, so Tano 3, for example, number 3 is codeine and acetaminophen. So acetaminophen plus codeine. So if you have Tano 2, or is like Tano 2 is like 15 milligrams of codeine and this much of acetaminophen. Tano 3 is like, well, maybe it's like 20 and 30 codeine. So Tano 3 has. 30 milligrams of codeine. Tano 4 has 60 milligrams of codeine. Okay? The plural or two sets? Tano 4 has codeine 60 milligrams. Percocet 